Morning. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, sorry. Go okay, ahead. now it's being recorded. I'm sorry. Um, I'll call it to order again just to get it on the recording of our first meeting of 2022, January 11th, um, Economic and Community Development Commission. And I was just saying Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you all had a great holiday and wishing you all the best in, uh, in 2022. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. You too, Jim. Thank you. We need to approve the uh, minute, the meeting minutes from our last meeting, which was November 9th. So I need a, a motion and a second for that, please. Okay, yes, sir. We'll make motion to approve the minutes from November okay. 9th, 2021. I will second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. I, I'll ask if anyone's opposed. It's usually easier on these formats. Is anyone opposed? or any changes. Okay, thank you. So the meeting minutes are accepted. Thank you, Frank and Colin. Um, the next order of business is to get an update on uh, economic development in Stratford. Mary? Okay, um, so the uh, former center school property at 1000 East Broadway, the two final developers uh, will present to the town council at a special meeting uh, in January. We're thinking it's January 27th at 530. And um, we've had the proposals um, on our economic development page for the town of Stratford website um, all along. So if anybody's interested in looking at them one more time. Uh, contract plating is on the market and uh, Ray Martin is the broker and he has had uh, three interested parties so far. Um, so we are waiting to see what happens with it. He's had a, um, a billboard up on 95 for the month of January. And as we've said before, um, if we can um, have um, a developer in place where we know what the end use will be, DECD is willing to provide us with over a million more in remediation uh, cleanup costs for this property. Um, the Army Engine site, we've had multiple uh, town departments assisting the developers with, um, you know, historical information on sewers and where they're located, um, additional resources, advice on the projects that need to get done before they can close and shortly after the closing. They're looking at the first quarter of um, 2022 for the closing and both the Army and the um, developer agreed that um, the for the extension, so it didn't cost the developer anything more. I, that was that had been an initial agreement that if they went past the initial closing date, which was to have been December 13th, that PSR would have to pay a certain amount of money. But Army Engine is still doing some due diligence um, on the property before they can close, so they both came to that agreement which is a good thing. Um, the Raymart Superfund site, um, the mayor and I had an updated phone call with um, EPA, with Jim DiLorenzo and Dan Keefe, uh, just regarding the schedule and how it's moving forward. So I can briefly just tell you that, um, you know, exit 33 interchange, the remediation has been completed. They'll do the plantings in the fall. They're going to have a virtual public meeting tomorrow night um, regarding the ex excavation of the Raymark Waste behind Blue Goose Restaurant on Ferry Boulevard. That work is going to begin on 124 and it will run through March to early April. And then early April to June, Beacon Point across from the water treatment plant um, behind Tide Harbor will be done. June through August, Hitchcock Marine. Um, fall will be the Ferry Creek Corridor. 2023 will be Wiz leasing Blashes, which is a, um, a car dealership on Ferry Boulevard and the former Rotary Ski Shop. And then the cap on the Rebestus uh, ball field is earmarked for completion in 2024. So that's exciting. So there's a lot of cleanup going on and there'll be a lot of virtual meetings and a lot of neighborhood meetings, which EPA does with the health department and the mayor um, monthly, um, just to keep everybody apprised of, of what's happening with the cleanup. Um, Spring Village, which is the former Atria, 
um, sold to a company, BFG, which we don't yet know what that stands for, and we'll find out, for $19,939,776. Um, it brought a town conveyance in taxes of $49,849, so that was pretty good. Um, 382 Ferry Boulevard, which is where the triple A was to have been built back years ago. It's the property that's across from Salsi and has a tree growing through the house, if anybody needs to know the location. Um, that has been approved for 119 residential apartments with retail on the first floor. Um, 211 Ferry Boulevard is located next to Blue Goose. It's, it, it's kind of a smaller property. That's been approved for 45 residential apartments with retail on the first floor. Um, 555 Lordship Boulevard sold in November for $10,600. Um, that's one of Jim Casey's Stratford Development properties. 350 Lordship Boulevard is another Stratford Development property that is under contract for a storage facility. We'll be talking about that. Um, 495 Lordship Boulevard, as you know, FedEx is there. They were taking 30% and now they're going to be moving towards um, filling out the whole 360,000 square feet. Um, we are going to be doing a traffic study over there. Um, we're going to get our traffic um, authority together because um, there's a lot of trucks going in and out of that small uh Honey Spot Extension Street now. There's a lot of businesses there. Just CDI, Nuova Pasta, Pace, FedEx that all have trucks. So we're looking to see what we can do to um, alleviate some of the backup that's been happening there. Um, Riders Landing, the construction of Starbucks is underway and that's the first step in their larger plan um, for a development that will be called Parkway Plaza. Um, we have some new businesses in town. Reader's Block is a little bookstore located at 2420 Main Street in Colonial Plaza. Um, Ada's Beauty Bar, located at 3355 Main Street. ATAX Tax Service is at 1345 Barnum Avenue, and we will be having a ribbon cutting for that this Thursday um, at 1130. Um, during the past month when we didn't meet, um, we had a ribbon cutting for Ash Creek Enterprises um, on uh, 1215 for uh, at 999 Oranoke. They moved from another um, from their location down by the train station. Um, and Exit 33 Northbound Interchange had their ribbon cutting on 1119 as well as Fish Bar de Milan. I don't know if anybody's been there, but they really have done a nice job of, of uh, fixing it up a little and the food is good. Um, and then on 1221, Nourish um, had an indoor, they, they had you know a, a, a gathering for their farm freight container delivery. It was their first delivery. That's where they do indoor growing um, on Stratford Avenue. Um, so that's businesses and ribbon cuttings. Um, so as you know, uh, we went to the Zoning Commission um, regarding outdoor entertainment and the Zoning Commission voted to approve with conditions. And I think we sent it all to you. So I don't know that I have to go into detail, but they basically wanted um, you know, permits required and Jay Habansky has done a yeoman's job of putting together a permit and running it through all the departments to make sure they're happy with it. Um, police, uh, health, who else, Karen? Uh, police, health. Fire, Pardon? fire marshal, is the fire marshal part oh, of that? Fire marshal. I don't, well, the fire marshal is because depending on where they put, they wanna make sure if they put a band in place that it's not blocking a doorway or anything. So I think it's probably those three. Um, and then there's a couple of um, items that they asked to be put into a place to ensure there wouldn't be issues. And um, for example, the permits, we're, we're not gonna charge the restaurants for them. The permits will expire 1231. And um, so each year, at least for the first few years, you'll have to reapply for a permit. 
so we're going to be reaching out to all the um, venues that have live entertainment. So Colin, that would be two rows would be one of them. And we figured during this quiet time, they can get the permitting all done. And then whenever they decide they're going to start their entertainment, which most likely won't be till the warmer weather comes, um, but at least they'll have it out of the way. Um, and it's the live entertainment is limited to the lot where the property is located. And um, so, yeah, we have a view. We have it going through viewpoint and we're really excited about it. And I think this provides a great opportunity. Karen and I are going to be reaching out to all the businesses over the next few weeks just to make sure they understand and they, um, you know, they know what the noise ordinance says because that's what they're going to be following. And um, so we're really looking forward to it. And we really, really thank the Economic Development Commission. And Frank, you did a great job presenting uh, for making a difference. It, we really, I think that this is going to be a positive thing for um, for the businesses in town. Um, anybody have any questions on that before I move forward? Yeah, let me just make a couple comments. Um, one, Frank, I wanted to also thank you for, for stepping in for me. You did a great job. That worked. I, I think we achieved what we wanted to achieve there. Um, and so, yeah, we, we made a difference there. And I appreciate you taking a night out of your time and filling in for me. Um, Certainly, Jim. Also, thank you. Joe, Joe McKnight, um, you know, I know you're later on the agenda to kind of as a new member, but I mean, I want to just make sure everyone knows you, meets you, that kind of a thing. So um, I'm not sure we did that last time where you actually introduced yourself and just kind of give us a little bit about your background. Um, and then we can go back and I'll go back to the agenda, Mary, but I just thought it would be appropriate to do that now. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Um, Joe McKnight. I'm over on Whippoorwill Lane here. Um, I guess it's called the North End. I'm not sure. I don't know the sections of Stratford still, but um, I surprised myself by celebrating, my, I think, my fourth, 14th year in Stratford when I bought this house. I thought I'd be here for two or three years and then moving on somewhere else. I didn't know where that would be, but I didn't think I'd be here this long. But um, every year I've grown to love the town more and more, uh, wanting to be more and more involved. So I expressed that desire to, to Mary and, and Mayor Hoyden. Uh, and I'm glad to be kind of in this meeting with you all. Um, a little bit of my, my background, I, I grew up in Guilford, Connecticut, uh, graduated from Guilford High and then Dartmouth College, uh, got my MBA at Southern Connecticut State. And um, after 13 years with Pfizer, you may have heard of them, I uh, <laughs> switched over to Amgen about two years ago, and I've been basically working virtually for them uh, over the last two years of the pandemic. So um, that's kind of a little bit of my background. Um, uh, in a large family, uh, we're all spread between Philadelphia and Northern Connecticut. And um, yeah, so I'm happy to be here with you guys. Thank you for the chance to introduce myself. Yeah, great. Well, we're really excited to have you, Joe, and uh, appreciate you being here. Um, Mary, just getting, you know, just so everyone knows, we'll, we'll get a summary, obviously, of, of what was just really done fairly quickly in terms of what's happening in, in Stratford. Uh, one question I do have, Mary, is when is the 95 southbound interchange going to open? Most likely in the spring. They had thought maybe, yeah, so, I mean, it's moving It's moving on target, and uh, we haven't had a horrible winter so far, so they're looking at the spring for the full, for everything to be done. Okay. And then the, the other question I have is you mentioned a pretty large project at that location next to the South Sea building. That's that old house that's empty, right? Is that what you were saying on that little house that's so, next to so The old house that's empty is called Morgan Francis. And that is part of the Raymark cleanup, the Superfund. And so that location will be remediated as well. Um, but the the, the larger one is located across the way. Um, if you, I think it might be Willow Street, Willow and Ferry. And it's it, it's like an aluminum building that had a tree coming out of the middle of it. Um, and it's, so that was supposed to have been uh, several years ago, a AAA was trying to get in the neighborhood was against it. And so the property kind of sat with, you know, uh, dormant for uh, a long time and then finally the buyer the per person that owned it sold it and now they're looking at this um, 
you know, retail, like a mixed use TOD type of um, project. The smaller one is next to the Blue Sky Diner. Right. So the, the one you mentioned that's sizable, 119 apartments with retail, that project's approved and the developer's already there and there's multiple buildings or is it one large building like the... Uh... It's two buildings. I think it's going to okay. be two buildings. I haven't seen the... I, 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 Jay, Jay was going to show me and I haven't had a chance to go over and take a look at the drawings on it. Okay. Any other Anyone questions? Anyone else have any questions on what's been presented so far? So I was just going to add that um, we had this Shop Small campaign. Karen Doyle um, did a great job on it. Um, it was held on November 26th, and she partnered the campaign with um, Howard Aspinwall from Mellow Monkey. He's been passionate about it every year. Um, of course, we always have our job opportunities page in Stratford on the website if anybody's interested in looking for um, uh, if they want to post uh, employment uh, requests. Um, and that's and that's about it. Oh, and finally, I just wanted to mention that Celebrate, we're working on sponsorships and pricing now. I don't know if Karen Doyle wants to say a couple things about Celebrate. Hi, everybody. Um, so Celebrate Stratford is back. We brought it back last year, um, slowly rolling out our events. Hopefully the metrics will continue to look, well, not continue, but will look better in a couple of weeks so that we can do Celebrate Stratford. Um, the series will open up with Restaurant Week. Um, and I think we have Restaurant Week scheduled for end of April, March, April. So um, once we have our dates firmed up, um, you'll be hearing more about that. Is that and when restaurant week was last year? Is that the same time frame? Yes, we try to we try to nestle it in so that it doesn't affect um, Easter or Mother's Day. So because the school break varies every year, it kind of switches every year because we don't want to do it when the kids are on school break. Um, right. You know, and right. I think we're trying right now to do we it when. It's Sorry, Mary. I think right now we have it slated for the last week of April because school break is the 18th to the 22nd. Right. Okay. Hey, Karen, any thought of extending it to possibly two weeks for restaurant week? Oh, weeks? Frank, we we are discussing that. We've reached out to a couple of our um, of our restaurant tours here in town. We're waiting for their feedback. Right now, we're getting some mixed reviews, but we are we are open to open to extending it out to two weeks. We're just waiting to hear what the restaurant owners think about it too. Good. Good. It's a lot to try to hit all those restaurants within just one week. Right, right. We'll see. We'll see what they right. say. Yeah. I mean, we might be able to come up with some creative ideas from our commission to support that week, you know, by using some of our budget money for something. I think we've done that in the past, but we should talk about that come, come April or really come maybe next month. What can we do to help promote that uh, week. If anyone has any ideas, that would that would help. We'll go um, over the just, budget uh, before the end of this meeting. It's uh, actually shortly we're going to talk about the budget. Who was going to say something? I heard someone try to say something. OK, maybe I didn't. OK, Mary. Okay, so I gave the update on the outdoor entertainment, even though it's on there. I, I gave it in my in my um, economic development report. So next then is the commercial realtors breakfast. Where does that stand? Um, Karen, you want to talk on that? Sure. So this year's breakfast, um, Randy has always been so so helpful with with his advice. Um, we. We're kind of between, you know, do we make it a luncheon? Do we make it a breakfast? And Randy was really um, insistent that we continue with the breakfast format, that that's really the, the best way to get people. So we're going to continue with that. Um, we've had it at Mill River Mirror for the last few years that we've held it. Um, but this year, we're pretty excited. We are going to be holding it at Two Roads um, in their side room. 
and we're going to be working with our wonderful new restaurant in town, um, Tasty Yolk. They're going to cater it for us. Um, and we'll be working, we're going to start next week, um, really hammering out the agenda for the meeting and, um, you know, making sure we include topics that are of great interest and helpful to the, the commercial realtors. And Karen, so there a date you said for that? Date. yes, I'm sorry. Um, February 24th, Thursday, February 24th. And I have to get back in touch with Ronnie at um, Two Roads to come up with a snow date. Yeah, we were thinking we probably need to have a snow date just in case, only because February, you know, you never know. Um, so it'll be 8 to 9.30 and early, you know, in and out. Um, I just for the record, I, I'll be out of town that day. But um, so, if you know, if we need something from the commission, then maybe Frank can step in again uh, on that. Um, okay, also, just a bigger question. Bigger question is, Colin, do you serve um, Bloody Bears in lieu of Bloody Marys uh, for a breakfast well, meeting at Two know, Roads? We do have our Daybreaker Blood Orange, which is basically a mimosa or a screwdriver, so we'll have those on there. Oh, really? <laughs> no, no, I have to tell you guys that Karen and I were like, why are we having it? Why, why don't we have it after work at 4 o'clock? Yeah. And we talked to Randy. We said, Randy, do you think people will come? He said, no, you got to do a breakfast. And we're like, really? You know, we just thought it was so nice to have it in the early, late afternoon and be able to, um, you know, enjoy the refreshments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have you guys either way. That's for sure. Thanks, Colin. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so next next on the agenda is uh, the budget review. Um, I don't believe everyone has a copy of where we are with the budget. Is that correct, Mary? Just just you sent that to me, I believe. But where we stand is every year we have a budget that goes from uh, the fiscal year of seven one to six thirty, and it's a budget of twenty five thousand dollars. To date, on that, uh, you know, we're basically halfway through the year. And so we have spent a little over $6,000, which means we have almost $19,000 still available uh, for the last part of this year. So as I said before, we can use it for something like restaurant week. Obviously the realtor's breakfast is gonna be uh, something that an expense we have. Are, are there any additional expected expenses for the videos this year? Yes, so we'll, we, we've got that on update on economic development marketing. So we wanted to show you the budget first so you know how much we had. And and we're going to talk about that and some plans. We sat down with the mayor, Karen, and Karen and I, and talked about some marketing ideas. Okay, so we'll hit that at the end. Um, so that's a, a basically just a review of where we are right now. Um, Moving on to new business, uh, we unfortunately uh, received a, a very friendly um, letter from Randy that he, he's going to be resigning from our commission. Um, he has served us extremely well. How many years, Mary, was was he? Was it? 14? Oh, in his letter, I think it's 13. Was yeah. It, yeah, I was going to say a dozen, but I think it's 13. Yeah, yeah he, and he, he, he he's working yeah. on some health issues, so... He's prioritizing that right now. Right. And he, he really loved being on this commission and he was really a very valuable member. Um, you know, I we haven't discussed this, but is there something we we can do to thank him, either a, a card or a gift certificate or something like that? Um, that's, that's a that's great idea, Jim. That's a great idea, Jim. Let let let's um when we're offline, we'll we'll kind of think of something and we'll, and we'll and we'll get him i think we should for all the years he served um and he, provided he did a lot of work great. for this commission yeah, and absolutely. i think i'm grateful for his service you know um, yeah that's a great idea okay okay and then um we already did have introduced uh, joe mcknight um so that brings us to the issue with the storage facility moratorium that we're, we'd like to propose. You wanna, you wanna sort of summarize that issue, Mary? Yeah, so um, it, it, this kind of came up the same way the, the restaurant live entertainment came up. I was in Jay's office and we were just talking about 
you know, the limited inventory for businesses in town. And um, we, you know, we already have three storage facilities. No, Karen gave, Karen actually sent you a list. There's a, a spreadsheet that gives you the storage facilities that are currently in place. We've got two that are on the agenda um, in February to be added. One is next to the storage facility that's already on, Broad, on Barnum Avenue across from um, Burlington. And the other one is on Lordship Boulevard. That's the one I spoke of uh, that they're looking to put a storage facility. It's literally a half mile from the storage facility that's behind the old Ramada. You know, the, um, so we, Karen and I had gotten a call, uh, someone looking for a school and they asked, uh, we said, oh, what about this location where, and, and it happened to be a realtor and they said, oh no, that looks like there's already a contract going through on this location. So when I'm in talking to Jay, he says, oh, that's somebody looking for a storage facility. And I said, are you kidding me? So now we've got four storage facilities or, or more. I have Karen, I, I don't have Karen's spreadsheet yeah, here. Mary, this, was, this one lists three. The, the one on Barnum Avenue, which is 100,000 square feet, at 771 to 845 Barnum Avenue. And right. then there's one, the, I assume these are the ones that are already existing. The, the 225 yes. Lordship, Lordship is 120,000 square feet. That already exists, correct? Yes, and, then, and Karen found and it, found it in more. She found so, DeRosier. Yeah, there were a couple more. But what what's happening is, it's you know we've got all these businesses that are coming in and wanting to do storage facilities, and we're losing out on at this particular location um, a school going in. Storage facilities provide no employment. They are very difficult to for adaptive reuse because they're big buildings on a lot and there's not enough parking for any other type of, um, of development because storage facilities don't need parking. But if you put something else there, they need the parking. So it's very difficult for adaptive reuse once they move out. So we just felt that, you know, we didn't need to be inundated with empty buildings that you don't get per, you get barely any personal property you bring no jobs into town um we've got we've got enough and the interesting thing is back in 2019 when the abatement um ordinance committee was redoing our abatement we back then knew that we didn't want any more storage facilities so they took storage facilities out of the um, mix to be allowed to have abatements. So that was kind of the first step towards that. So when I was talking to Jay and then I talked to the mayor, I said, you know, we did a, we did a great job with this live entertainment. We have yet to see, but we'll monitor it. But I think that it is in our community's best interest to put a moratorium on them for a year and we can wait and see um, what happens a year down the line and be able to allow what limited inventory we have to be actual businesses that bring in jobs. Um, so that was really you know, the, what prompted us to uh, put this together. And the uh, zoning meeting is on February 23rd. I know, Jim, you might be in uh, Florida still, um, yeah. So if Frank can come, I think it would be the same type of thing we did but, um, for the live entertainment. We would speak before them and, um, you know, and you would speak on behalf of the commission and, um, you know, we'll see where we go from there. So, so Mary, uh, February 23rd. Um, okay. Okay. Just to sort of add to it a little bit is that the the study that you kind of shared, I think, did everyone receive this document about the self-storage facilities? Okay, so you can yes. see that at, 
uh, with the existing storage facilities, we're already at 341,000 square feet. Whereas if you look at our population versus what would be, you know, considered, I guess, the norm, we're already 40,000 square feet over that. And there are two projects already on the table uh, for February that I'm not sure if we were to suggest this and then it were to pass in February, whether it would affect those two new proposed projects. Do we know that? Yes. Well, so they're going to go on the agenda first because they were already on the roll. You know, they were already in process. So we felt that for the sake of just being open and, you know, they had come first. We would, So the agenda will say storage facility number one, storage facility number two, and then moratorium on storage facilities. So it'll be interesting to see what the zoning um Commission does, but we we gave them the courtesy of being on the on the agenda first, since they were already in the works. But that just goes to show you how many more. I, I was talking to another realtor about a a property that is just a wonderful property to have light industrial retail. It's perfect, and it hasn't moved yet because the father and son aren't you know are at, at odds as to selling the property. But one of the proposed, one of the people that came was a storage facility. And I was like, no, this isn't a TOD. Do not, we don't want another storage facility in a place that's supposed to be bustling with people. You know, um, so. So basically, if you read um, on the second page of that document, that is the proposed text amendment that um, we are asking the commission to support review you know we just for us to vote on tonight so that we can then get on the agenda and support this at the zoning it, it, is, by the way mary is there last time on the noise ordinance didn't we have to go through the to, through the planning commission first we don't have to do that this time we don't have to do that this time Okay. I, I went to Jay, Jay, you know, I followed Jay Habansky's guidance on this as to, you know, what we have to do. Okay. So are th is there any discussion on this? Any thoughts, any, any additional comments before we, we vote on it? Yes, I'd like to comment um, with all these places already in town and potential of a couple more. Can we extend? I mean, it says for a period of 12 months. You know, no, um, to, to have the moratorium, can we make it more? 20, 24 so Jay months, I, 36 months. Jay and I talked about three years, but his advice was go with the year and then you can always extend it. So that's, we, we follow that, that's why we did that. And we looked at what other towns do too. Um, and generally, when you're doing a moratorium, it's for six to, to 12 months. We also talked to Brian LeClaire, our town attorney, you know, just to make sure we were doing everything uh, appropriately. So um, it, it was it was decided that we should go with, a, a, you know, 12 months and then we can always extend it. Okay. Just don't want the vultures like sitting and waiting for uh, something else, something to happen. Just wait for it, wait it out for a year. Well, hopefully, if they want to really grow, they can go to some other towns. I, I think it's, I think it's great, personally. I, I, I agree with everything, Mary, that you said. Um, so I have, uh, so Jim, um, I think I mentioned to you, Greg Can is our representative for uh, the t town council, and he sent yes. a comment. But Greg, if you'd like to say it out loud, I, I think you... You sent a comment in the in this aside, but you you're welcome to speak regarding that. Hello, Mary. Um, thank you for an opportunity to speak. I do support the moratorium as written. Um, it was good to reference when we did the tax abatement. You know the fact that it was excluded because we anticipated saturation. So I, I appreciate the commission uh, proposing this and I hope it gets support of zoning. Great, thank you, Greg. And also let me say, you know, we, we welcome your participation and, uh, you know, glad you're, glad you're involved. So, so thanks again. Um, any other comments on this issue before we bring it to a vote? 
Okay, so uh, I would need, I would like to entertain a motion uh, for uh, the commission to support this proposed text amendment. Yeah, it's Jen. I'll make that motion. Okay, is there a the second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Uh, I think Colin was first, or Brian, was it Brian? Who, who's? Brian who's was second? first. Brian, you're, you're seconded. Uh, any other discussion before I ask if everyone is in favor? Okay. Um, why don't I ask if anyone is opposed? I, I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, is anyone opposed to the motion? Okay. Now I'm assuming everyone then is in favor, hearing nothing. Okay. So that passes, Mary. So, um, so that'll be brought forth. Are we already on that agenda then for that yes, meeting in yeah. February? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, Jay put a placeholder on it just so that you know we could make sure, knowing that we wanted to, you know, have it be um, very open and and have the okay. the commission vote on it first. But he put a place setting in there for us. And our in-person spokesperson Frank Babacqua will do a fine job representing us again. Thank you, Frank. He's an old pro now. Um, okay, so Mary, uh, last on, on the agenda for new business is update on the economic develop, development marketing budget. So um, I'm going to start and then Karen and Karen can join in because of, we, we met with the mayor. Um, I don't even remember a couple. I think it was before Christmas. And we talked about, you know, because Economic Development Commission has been so active in and supporting um, and coming up with ideas for our marketing that it might be a good idea to kind of do a marketing subcommittee on the commission. So, um, and, and in our mind, we thought maybe um, it would be our staff and then Colin Kennedy, I, I should have called you first, Colin. Um, Colin Kennedy, as our representative on the commission, could give us just some guidance, be that person that when we're working on something, you know, because this is what he does for a living. And then bringing Miriam Vlahak as the marketing volunteer because she's, we've worked with her on several different things. She helped us when we were doing our uh, videos um, with her college students and she did the Strange Stratford tour and did a fantastic job. So one of the first things we thought we would love to be able to do is um, really market our Stratford's historic locations, our natural resources, and our nonprofits, because we haven't done that yet. And um, we thought of, you know, and this is just Karen and Karen and I kind of, you know, with our thoughts. So we would welcome any input from the rest of you, but create a video like we have done in the past, a short video. But um, we've been wanting to do a map um, and we said digital and hard um, of Stratford. Like, you know, people come in and they we don't have anything to hand out to them. And it's been it's been difficult. Karen Doyle has been looking into map companies, and it's been really hard to find someone. But we thought maybe if we put you know our um, some dollars behind from the commission, and with Marianne and our work, and Colin could could kind of guide us maybe if we're thinking digital or whatever, um, just really kind of create something that, um, you know, under tourism, people could come in and they'll know what's happening in Stratford and what to come and see, because we have a lot of museums now. You know, we have the African Art Museum, we have the Veterans Museum, we have the Judson House, we have the Perry House, we have, the, you know, we just have so many different sites to see that we just thought it would be great to be able to um, market them to the public. So I don't know if Karen and Karen, you want to add anything to that before anybody has questions or comments? I don't think so, I think you covered everything. Um, just that we have, we all know that we have some wonderful assets in town and it's, um, I think it's really important for us to feature them and to let you know new residents know um, 
attract tour, build up our tourism in town um, between the restaurants and these, the museums and the natural resources. Um, we have a lot to be proud of and a lot to tout. So um, we, we would love to take advantage of, of marketing opportunities to get the word out. We can work with the Connecticut Board of Tourism and, um, you know, get things in their uh, visitor centers and, um, you know, make sure we're really up to date on the website um, with our museums. I think what really started, well, the mayor um, had the idea too, but um, with the addition of three new museums in one year, that that's pretty substantial. Um, mm -hmm. And I also think that, you know, when we've looked at the maps, um, you know, when you go to different places like Falmouth or other places uh, that are tourist uh, uh, locations, you know, they have those cute maps, the cartoon maps, but they're supported by the businesses. And we thought if if the commission could support it, the businesses don't have to support it. You know, it would be nice to be able to just have it be a map that we're not asking anything of the businesses. So that was kind of what we were thinking um, to support that. So Karen Doyle, anything you want to add to that? Nope, I was just going to echo what you're saying is that if we get the support from the commission to fund something like this, we don't have to put the ask out to the businesses who, you know, a lot of them have struggled, especially the restaurants, um, because based off of my research <clears throat> on a digital platform, um, advertising opportunities to be included in something like this open at $700 and based off of how much um, how much they want to get out of it they can go up into the thousands and I, I don't think that we're comfortable asking our businesses to, to you know do something like that right now so Mary I, I just have a quick clarification of the of the question so we aren't talking about just regular maps of Stratford we're talking about those specific like tourism focused maps yes yeah we're talking about being able to put on there like so putting, you know, we won't necessarily put the businesses because then that doesn't live long enough, you know, but you can put, you know, Paradise Green in there and you can put the nonprofits in there, the um, all our historical locations, not only the museums, but we talked about, what was it, Max Harbor? Am I getting that right, Karen? Ma yeah, Max Harbor. Max Harbor. Um, the the, the, the Lost Point. The mile yeah. markers, the historical right. things. Yeah, so there's so many different historical and could be a really cool map. And it might, so it might not show the individual businesses in, in Paradise Green, but it would show where Paradise Green is and, you know, then further down um, the center of town and just kind of a, a fun map for people that, you know, it could be given out at the train station at, you know, and we have the helicopter museum that's never open, but. We do have that too. Uh, that's right at the train station. Right. And the way that I kind of envision it from a digital standpoint is almost a little interactive. Like you see an actual physical map of Stratford with markers as to where everything is. You click on one thing, it brings you to the Perry House website. You click on another thing, it tells you how you can make a reservation to rent the lighthouse when that becomes something that we can do. Um, so it's not just a website with a map, it's something that's a little bit more user friendly and interactive. Yeah, Karen, I love that. And, you know, we, you might be able to extend that on the physical map as well. Now with QR codes being um, common knowledge for everybody after, you know, you can, if you segment right. Paradise Cream, Lordship, you can actually have that QR scan and bring up all the local businesses that are around that area. To let people, again, click through uh, to that specific website. Right. And to even expand on that, and this is something that we could talk about if we form some sort of a marketing subcommittee, you know, do we want to create even like an app, like a Stratford Tourism app, you know? Yeah. Be really great um and then and then so, um, the restaurants and the hotels and all of that stuff because that's easy to switch in and out you know 100%. right right um and one of the things i think greg wrote in comments was taking advantage of you know our tourism you know state of connecticut and karen sportini is all over that working with seeing what there is out there in terms of our tourism and last yeah. question about this, Mary, is is the challenge in finding somebody to do the maps, is that, a, is that a factor of the map industry kind of maybe having less and less people go into that, or is it a pandemic-related thing or both? Well, Karen's the one that's been looking into it. I, I don't think it's a pandemic thing, but Karen, what it, when you were looking into different companies, what was your take on it? The take was that, you know, 
print is dead and everything is digital. Um, that said, we do have a large senior community that we have to take into consideration and people still do like ink on paper. So, you know, again, we'd have to do a little bit digging of how to make something that can translate print and digital. Um, mm -hmm. But the focus is to do something more digitally and, and kind of do the print thing as a, you know, extra add on. People like handouts. People like to have something to, to hold on to. I, even if print is dying, I just think that it would be, you know, it would be beneficial if we could have it like at Milford Bank, at, at the Senior Center, at, you know, various locations, at, you know, the museums and just for people to hand out. That's also great for, you know, yeah, to your point, Mary, each business and each restaurant which should have those maps as well. Um, and then, you know, I, I know when, when I've been to a couple of weddings and touristy locations, Mystic, for example, those are always included at the hotels in, in the bags that you right. get for part of the wedding. So it's a nice thing to give to anyone that might be visiting, especially at our hotel properties to help, you know, visitors explore the town a little bit more properly. Oh, Homewood Suites would be all over that. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually think that the idea too of it being an app where you can pull out your cell phone and, and I don't know if that's realistic or not, but but pull it pull it up as a Stratford app and then when it's on your cell phone, it can direct you to restaurants and nonprofits and museums. And um, again, it's kind of just a brainstorm, but um, I think it's a great idea, a really nice way to market the town. And then yeah. I guess putting Colin on the spot. Is that uh, something, you know, you're interested in doing, Colin, what Mary described? Definitely, yeah. And, you know, working with Karen and Karen, yeah, I, I'm definitely interested in that for sure. Great. And it won't, take, it won't take a lot of time. It's just the ideas. Like right now, Colin just had a couple of, you know, it's just getting, you know, when somebody's in marketing like Marianne and Colin, it just, they just naturally have ideas. And, you know, and Karen and Karen are great but it's always good to get extra ones too well if we could real if we could get some concrete traction on it in the next month or two that would be good because we do have some budget money available for this effort um would this be in lieu of the the, the video the marketing videos we've been doing or or would it be in addition to well we still have the summer video that never came out that we're going to want to come out come june right or may before memorial day and that's mm -hmm. kind of a tourism one what to do in stratford this summer um and i think that once we do this we kind of revisit i feel like you know um we could we could kind of think as we're moving along is there another video that we think a short one that people might be that might be beneficial to stratford or an updated one um right now this is kind of where what we were thinking so like i said we can just kind of get it and get a little traction on it and get some estimated costs so we can kind of work out the, the budget for the remainder of the year and do something i think that's a great idea thank you colin for agreeing to uh to get involved with that and anyone else who wants to get involved too you know please um offer your services to colin and, and mary and karen yeah, we, we'd, we'd like everyone involved, but we just thought of Colin because of the marketing side of things. Okay. Um, is there anything else, uh, any other new business to cover tonight? Any other old business or anything else, any other topics? I have one little, one little point that we haven't mentioned yet. Um, a kind of an offshoot from the shop small um karen doyle designed an adorable um window cling that says shop local and um we've begun distributing them from our office but we have a, a good supply of them and we would love to get them in your hands hopefully we'll see you in person soon and um if you could just just help us to distribute them around town you'll notice them in in the restaurant windows and the business windows but it's um just you know, kind of a making that that shop small, shop local, a year-round campaign. Great job, Karen. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if we can get our hands on them, and anyone want, is willing to do some of them, that's great. The more of those that get around, the better. Yeah. So um, if you're into them, all grab, come into our office, and if you're not, we'll we'll make a point of getting them to you. 
we'll get a handful and then you can kind of, if you're going out to dinner or going somewhere, you have one, you can give it to the, if you don't see it on the window, you can give it to the owner. So the next meeting is scheduled, what's the date of the next meeting scheduled for Mary right now? We're right, carrying the, um, all the meeting schedules, February 8th. Okay, so for now that meeting is slated to be a virtual meeting. Um, I think it's going to remain that way for at least the next month or two, given what you know we're all seeing with COVID. So, um, so we'll plan on that, you know, doing the same format on February eighth. Um, any other comments tonight? Any other thoughts or? Does that count? Is it is it a calendar invite that we get sent for that, or is it just kind of we mark it in our own calendars? Um, Karen Sportini. Right, Joe. We, um, no, actually, we just mark it in our own calendars, Joe. But you know what? I apologize. I don't know that I sent you the um, the actual schedule. Did I do that yet, Joe? I don't think so. Okay, I'll make sure you have the year's calendars, and then you would just put them in your own calendar. Okay. Okay. But you do get an email, I think it's the day before or a couple days before, with the link to, you know, sign in. So you'll get a reminder. But, yeah, if you can make sure that everyone has a schedule, Karen, I know I have it already. That's I think great. Joe's the only one. Um, I'll make sure Greg has it. Thank okay. you. Okay. I think that's it, yeah. Okay. Anything else? Motion to motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Frank, second. I second. Who was that? Joe. Joe, thank you, Joe. Um, 